Hey YouTube, this is Jaden Star of Kevin Action Team Shadow Strike, and it is finally time for me to give you a deck profile that I have been very excited to give you. Um, I will. You guys are probably going to ask why I didn't do a box opening of Generation Stride. I, this is not a box that I bought. Someone bought like three boxes at our locals, and I traded for a bunch of stuff. And I asked him if I could just have one of his boxes to store stuff in. Um, but because of um, my grandma's funeral and a bunch of other things that came up, I just didn't have the money to invest in three boxes like I normally like to buy when a new set drops. Um, I'm going to still be doing boxes for you guys, don't worry. I might buy one box of G1 just to open it for you guys. Um, but, um, so, but... I do have new deck profiles for you, and by new deck profiles, if you clicked on this video, I mean the deck that wrecked Japan, and in my opinion is, I don't, it speaks for itself, it's Dragonic Overlord the Cross, so that's what this video is going to be about, so I'm going to be telling you about um, my new Kagero toy, because we all know Jaden loves Kagero decks, so anyway, I'm going to get into this deck, um, so I'm not going to waste another minute yambling, so let's just go for it, so... <sighs> so, this is my Kagero Dragonic Overlord, the X deck. So, um, I'm going to start off with the main deck, and then we will cover the strides. Shout out to my friend Ryan for getting me a pack of the Silver Star Sleeves, because I am still pissed that Bushiro did not give us the Silver Backs like they gave to Japan. Fuck you, Bushy Road. But I still love you. So for the starter, I run Red Pulse Draco Kid. So you're going to be searching for grade 3s in this deck very frequently. Um, and you need them to get off your abilities. So this is a no-brainer. Um, Red Pulse is Red Pulse. I mean, they're, I mean, <laughs> he's pretty much the go-to starter for Kagiro. And he's just so freaking cute. Look, he even, he even says, I'm a warrior. Stop calling me cuddly. For triggers, we play four Demonic Dragon Mage Apalala, because this is my favorite Kagiro tri crit trigger. It just looks absolutely amazing. And then we play four of the new critical trigger, Magnum Shot Draco Kid, who looks cute. So we have badass, cute, badass, and cute, cute, badass. So we play four Gatling Claw Dragon for draw triggers. And then we play... One Barbara, one Teresa, one Agafia, and one Mother Orb Dragon for our four beautiful heal triggers. So, you might be asking why I don't play five triggers, because in my Perdition deck I played five crit, five draws, and a lot of my Kagero decks have always played seven crit, five draw, four heal. And the reason that I'm not is because you thin this deck pretty quick with searches, um... And you know, so you're gonna get have ex you're gonna have cards in your hand. So there's really no point in playing more draws than this. You'd rather just have the crits, um, because with your the search ability in this deck and just everything else that you have going for it, because it's freaking the cross, you can get by with just the seven crit, five draw, four heal. I mean, eight crit, four draw, four heal. So. Um, you know, if it ever did become a problem, then I would just drop one of the magnum shots and put in a random draw trigger, but. In my early stages of playtesting online, this trigger lineup worked just fine. Next, we play four of the new breed of Perfect Guards. Four, Protect Orb Dragon. So, this is a new breed of Perfect Guard. Um, you know, so... And by the way, I really do how like we're getting the flag now. But anywho, so this Perfect Guard, whenever... Um, you use this to protect your vanguard because the, these new perfect guards can only be used to protect the vanguard. You may not use them to protect a rear guard. So whenever you use this after um, you have guarded the attack, um, if there's a copy of him in the in the damage in the drop zone as well, you may unflip a damage. So this is kind of this is crucial for at least this variant because you do counterblast quite a bit. Um, so it's important to have these. Um, I don't understand why you wouldn't run these. I understand the argument that you have to get one in the drop zone before it's even relevant, but it's still an option. <laughs> you know, I don't understand why you wouldn't play it just for that one chance to unflip. So, I mean, I understand why some people don't play them. You know, maybe they just don't want to invest in it, and that's fine. But I, my opinion is, is if you can have it, then why not? So, four protect orbs. 
three, Dragon Monk Gojo. The this is arguably the the staple of Kagero decks. There's like I've said before, this guy can go in just about any Kagero deck imaginable. And since this is still technically a Legion deck, he is a good go-to card to just simply rest, drop, and draw. And he's a good first turn ride. Next we play two Energy Flame Athonic, I think that's how you pronounce. Whenever you retire one of your opponent's rear guards and this is on your rear guard circle, you may move him into the soul and unflip to damage. So it is, it's just a way for you to get some more unflipped damage. Um, and he's still a good solid 7k boost until you do do that. Next we play two Lava Flow Dragon. Now this is another one of the new cards that we're seeing with the Generation Break cards. Um, his ability is, his first ability um, is not used in this deck because I don't play Blade Master, but you use it for that second ability, which is when it's in your hand and you're paying the cost for stride and you discard it, he becomes a grade three. So you don't have to discard one of your grade threes, which is really essential in this deck. Um, and um, it's a cheap way to cheap way to go so i mean right now i'm starting off with two i might boot this up to three but i don't know i think two safe because in real honesty guys you have stride in this deck but you really don't need it um the cross already is deadly enough but he's in here as a 7k boost and you can just hold on to him in case you do want to stride and then finally we play two calamity tower wyvern two soul blast two away and draw another card so it works very well with um our grade three lineup so Grade 2, we play 4, Burning Horn Dragon. This card is actually shot up in price a lot because he is very hard to find. Fortunately for me, I have like 5 play sets. So anyway, um, whenever we have an Overlord Vanguard, this is a 12k attacker. So it's a no-brainer since every Grade 3 in this deck I play is an Overlord. Um, so, no-brainer. Next, we play 4, Dragonic Burnout. Now... This card, guys, is arguably one of the best cards that you um, Kagero has, and there's a lot of misconfusion about how to play this card. A lot of people play it as, I call this to rear guard, I soul blast immediately and then return. If that was the case, this card would be really stupid, because that means I can call soul blast one of my overlords that's in the soul, and then put it right back in the deck. The way this card works is when it's called to the rear guard, you first have to have an overlord in your drop zone return that to the bottom of your deck, then you Soul Blast. That's how the card works. So if you do do that, you get to destroy one of your opponent's rear guards. So it, it, it's really cool because it helps you clear out your soul. It lets you put your overlords back in your deck for later use. Um, so really awesome. And then finally, we play three, Dragonic Neoflame. Um, Neoflame's effect is the turn he's placed on the rear guard. If a unit in the same column is that... Uh, in the, if a unit is in the same column... Um, as he is and is retired, you may counterblast one and retire another unit as well. So, <clears throat> guys, there's nothing else to say. This is the most broken grade 2 lineup that Kagura's ever had. You are looking at probably the three best grade 2s that have defined some of the best Kagura decks. The End, Rebirth, Perditions. Now all of them are in the same deck. That is stupid. That's what makes this deck so good, is you have the ability now to call on all the most broke shit Kagero's got. So, I am so glad this deck is finally here. Let me kind of straighten this up. And then finally, our grade threes. And to start it off, it's the... It's the badass himself. Four copies of Dragonic Overlord, The Cross. And I even was able to trade for one gorgeous, sexy-ass SP. Look at it. Look at it! So anyway, guys, um, <laughs> say hello to the new face of Kagero, the new face of brokenness, the new face of badass, the, the epitome of Kagero, and just fire <laughs> okay so um i guess i really can't get into discussing him until i bring out our next guy which this next this next card needs no introduction as well i play three copies of dragonic overlord the end again guys <laughs> if you've played vanguard you have seen this card um this in my opinion it's up there for arguably the best card ever made because this card this card came out at a stage in the game where this guy literally was almost unstoppable. Um, 
So honestly, so obviously, we'll get back to the cross. So the cross, obviously, he legions with the end. The fact that these, the feet, the fact that you can, that this, that I really, I'm at a loss for words, guys. When my friend Ryan sent me this card when it was announced, I literally about laughed. I mean, I laugh my ass off. The fact that it says, okay, it legions. Well, who does it legion with? Oh, only the most broken card that ever existed. So the fact that these two now can share the field is absolutely insane. So Dragonic Overlord, the cross, his ability is legion. He's a 22k legion. So seek the mate. Um, whenever you legion, um, you um, have the ability to activate. You may search for... Here, I'll read it word for word. When this unit legions, search your deck for up to one card with the same name as a unit on your vanguard circle. Reveal it to your opponent, put it into your hand, and shuffle your deck. So what that basically means is the cross is your vanguard. You go legion, seek the mate. Now, when you're in legion, his effect activates. You may search your deck for one copy of the cross or one copy of the end. Um... And also, um, the cross's ability is when, uh, 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 sorry guys, I couldn't read it. I want to make sure I read this properly for you guys. Vanguard auto ability, uh, at the end of the battle that this unit attacked, if this attack did not hit during that battle, you may pay the cost of counter blast one and persona blasting one copy of the X. And if you do choose up to two of your opponent's rear guards and retire them, you do not have to be in Legion to activate that skill. Um, but, um, so even if it's, say, your opponent's on grade two, and you ride grade three first, you can attack with the X, and if they block it, then you can drop a copy of the X and blow up, um, two of their rear guards and to get an early, even earlier advantage. Um, and then we go to the end. The end's abilities... <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> I haven't read this card out loud on a video, guys, in so long. Dragonic Overload at the end. The first ability you really don't have to worry about, but if you have a non kagero Vanguard, or Rearguard, this unit gets minus 2k. That'll never happen. Second ability, if you have a copy of Dragonic Overlord in the soul, this unit gets plus 2k. That'll never happen. But the ability that we really do love is Counter Blast 2 and Persona Blast to copy the end. When this unit's attack hits, you may stand back up. So, essentially, guys, when you're in Legion... Your opponent has something to worry about whether the attack hits or whether it misses. If it hits, they can Persona Blast and resand. If it doesn't hit, they can Persona Blast and blow two cards up. That is insane. I don't know what else to say. You know, it is absolutely bonkers because now your your opponent use, usually either usually has to worry about it hitting or not hitting, not both. Because now if it doesn't hit, their field goes away. If it does hit, they possibly could get trigger sacked. So it this um, is the epitome of fear <laughs> in your opponent. Um, the cross and this guy go together so well. Well, um, they complement each other so well. Um, and that's not even the end of um, our grade threes. I also played two copies of Perdition Emperor Dragon Dragonic Overlord the Great. So you basically have access to all of in my opinion the best three Dragonic Overlords that ever existed. Um or three of well you know what I take that back. You know what these all the Overlord cards have always been busted. You know I mean in the and you know but um but we all know what per, um this guy does seek the mate he legions with Neo Flame. Um uh, his ability is, um, where does the writing start in the parentheses end? At the end of the battle that this unit attacked a rear guard, if this unit is in legion, you may, you may counter blast one, discard two cards from your hand. If you do restand all your vanguards and this ability cannot be used for the rest of the turn. Um, so basically you can go attack a rear guard and stand back up, then attack the vanguard. And then also his second ability is, which will rarely happen since I only played two great. If your vanguard is the great and you have a rear guard great, if your vanguard great hits, you may retire a unit that is also on the vanguard circle and retire one of your opponent's units at the same time. So also when you're in legion, if you have a rear guard Neo Flame or Overlord and this attack hits, you may sacrifice a rear guard Overlord or Neo Flame and retire one of your opponent's units. So, but also what this comes in handy with. Say you do an early Legion with the cross. 
you can ride over with the grate. And then you can use your burnouts and your calamity towers to soul blast the overlords and put them right back in the deck. And then um, you can um, legion them right back in. And then when you write another copy of the X, you can search it out again. So it, the... the, the um, my friend Ryan calls this um, Overlord and his friends. I mean, so this literally, guys, um, this is the epitome of everything that Kagiro has ever had. It has everything that we've ever come to love about Kagiro as far as us Kagiro players. We have restand ability. We have nuke ability. Um, there is, our opponent has so much to worry about when they're facing this deck. It is unreal. Um, so I am just so glad that this deck is finally here. Um, I've been counting down the days ever since it was announced. So, <laughs> but um, and I will say because so, um, someone um, asked me if I was copying the J J the Japanese Grade Three lineup that was seen a lot. Um, the answer is no, I did not. I honestly was going to play this myself because I had an envision of using Calamity Tower to soul blast the overlords that were my previous legion and then just putting them right back and then searching it out again. So um, I just, I didn't uh, steal that from Japan, but you know, I was glad when I saw that that was what everyone was doing. So that meant I was on the right track, but some people I've seen many different builds of this. Some people play for the end and only won the great, the reason I play um, only three copies of the end is not because that's all I have. I actually have like four play sets of this. But the reason I only play three is because realistically, you're only going to get the end off maybe once a game. Because if you do get it off just once, chances are you're going to devastate your opponent so much. Because then, because I can't tell you how many times in my early stages of playtesting attack... They would go two to pass, I would hit, Persona Blast, restand, and say I hit a crit, and then I'd attack them again. They would nullify it. Oh, Persona Blast with a cross, blow up two cards. They then have wasted so much because um, just to survive. So I really don't think four end is necessary, and the great, they just serve as a good way to um, um, just be there and also just to re-legion again and shove the triggers right back. So, I mean, and your overlords along with your burnouts. So, I, I, think, it's, I think it's the smart smart move. Now, um, if you play 4N, that's fine. I've seen builds of it that work just fine. I just prefer this. So, so 4X, three copies of the end, and two copies of Dragonic Overlord the Great. Just, I am just, I cannot tell you guys how happy I am to finally have this deck. So, next... My very first G deck showing. So, um, thanks again. Shout out to my friend Ryan for giving me these silverback sleeves. These look so fucking sexy. So, for our first G unit, we play four copies of Flame Emperor Dragon King Root Flare Dragon. I also have one SP of him as well. So, um, his ability is... Um, Stride, discard grade 3 or up to grade 3 from your hand. Um, choose a face-down card name... Okay, if the number of face-up cards in your G-Zone is 2 or more, um, you may flip over a copy of Root Flare in your G-Zone face-up. And if you do, choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire that whole column. So, um, in order to get his skill off, you had to have stride. You had to have strode at least once. Um, so, you can't... It's not a good idea to stride into him first. Um, so if you do stride over, say you're, say you're in Legion here with the cross, and you stride over, he's going to become 26 by himself. Um, you know, so you really do, you don't want to stride into him first. You want to save him closer for the late game or after you've already strode at least once. For the rest of my stride units, I play two copies of Divine Dragon Knight Mahmud. This is the unit that I'm that I will. 99 out of 100 times always stride into first um, because um, what this guy does, um, he's just a generic G unit for Kagero. When his attack hits, you may retire one unit. Um, there, he's there mainly just so you can get a face-up card in your G zone. So what you do generally is, okay, I'm going to say your G zone looks like this. 
This is uh, the, my first stride, and then this guy is going to go here, and then my second stride will be this, and then I'm going to use his skill. Now there's two face-up cards in my G-Zone, so his effect activates. So, well, technically there would be there'd be two here anyway, So, but that's how that works. So uh, in order to use this guy, you must have strode at least one time, so just keep that in mind. Um, and also, I will say that I freaking love this guy's artwork. He reminds me of Shenron from Dragon Ball Z. And then for my final two G units, is I play two Miracle of uh, Miracle Element Atmos. So this is the first of all the Cray Elemental cards that we'll be getting. Um, so his ability is is uh, Stride. Um, when this unit attacks a Vanguard, you may pay the cost of Counter Blast one, and he receives plus ten thousand power. So going back, if you're in if you're in Legion, stride over, he becomes 26. You're going to have some sort of a boost. So, and then you attack, activate Atmos' skill, counterblast 1, plus 10,000. So now he's 36, and you can give him a boost, so he can hit 40 real easy. So if you're looking for a G unit, and you've used your root flares, and your opponent has very little cards in their hands, you can just stride straight into Atmos to win the game. Because there's if they have like only four cards in their hand, they're not going to be able to guard this. So... So, that is my my G zone. So, um, four root flare, two Mamad, and one and two uh, Atmos. Um, I might change this into Blizza when Blizza comes out, but um, Atmos right now is doing just fine. Um, so, well, Blizza's already out as a promo, but I do not have any. Sad me. But you know. Oh well, but anyway, guys, that is my um, version of Dragonic Overlord VX. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. You have no idea how long I've been waiting for this deck. The fact that I was able to get all of my stuff without having to get any boxes for this deck makes me so happy. Um, considering everything I've been through, you know, so I'm really glad that I have this deck done. Um, shout out to you know all the people who helped me put this together by trading the stuff to me or just um helping me out you know so it means this deck uh means means a lot to me you know so even though it's just a you know basically a stack of paper i'm just glad to finally have this deck so thank you very much guys um in the comment section below leave all your comments on this deck i will be doing matches i will be doing um <clears throat> um a deck instructional video and tips on how to deal with this deck you guys are looking at um what a lot of people consider the best deck in the format. So I w hope you guys enjoy this. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, thumbs up this video, share it with your friends. Leave, please leave feedback. Jaden loves feedback and he loves answering questions if you have them, so do not be shy. Thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you next time.